understand if there is anything that business is struggling with and we can help them with. Also, uh, we have an international exchange program as a part of MBA. Uh, LBS has tied up with almost all top US business schools as well as European business schools. You can choose to choose to exchange and go on exchange with Vietnam, Colombia, Chuck. Uh, uh, there, there are a list of uh, uh, there are a list of schools that you can choose to uh, choose to exchange with. Mostly Indian, but I see uh, out of my experience, they usually choose US universities for exchange. But then you have options in Europe, you have options in Hong Kong, you can, you can do it with Hong Kong universities. I mean, uh, LBS has started with uh, over 10 universities to be more specific. Uh, okay, so there are also. Uh, this is, this is, these are the main things uh, that the program can Apart from that, this time, which is July to, uh, which is June to August, is the time wherein we, we are, we will be doing internship. Uh, right now, my batch, over, over 80% of my batch have secured internships already, and the other, others are on way to finalizing. Uh, when once we come back from internship is when our second year and we start. Uh, Vinny, uh, Vinny, I have a few questions for you here. So uh, if I may, I'll just uh, have a few questions uh, at this stage. Uh, so my first question is, you know, you say that... So my first question is, you know, you say that... Just, uh, so my uh, first question is that you say that um, the uh, there are three exit points uh, one after 15 months one after 18 months one after 20 months so my first set of questions is related to this point okay so i'll tell all my questions at in one go and then you can answer them so my first question is that uh, so when you are finishing in 15 months what are the advantages of that are is the tuition fee going down or reducing well, and uh, why would somebody want to do that and uh, if is there any advantage of doing it in 21 months vis-a-vis -vis the 15 months or 18 months uh, second uh, that that's like the first question second question is uh, uh, would you? What is your recommendation? You know, there right now there are a lot of this tension or worries about Brexit and job uh, issues. Uh, so, given all the scenario, you know, what would be your recommendation? First question: So, tuition fee is not a function of your exit point. Tuition fee remains same, irrespective of when you choose to exit. And the advantage primarily is that one, you need to start the work earlier, so hence you start saving on your uh, living expenses and other expen expenses that you would incur as a student, you start making money soon. And the disadvantage is that it, it becomes like uh, you have to finish 12, 22, core, 22 subjects in 15 months, which means it, is like, it gets a bit overwhelming for students. Uh, you have to be, you will be doing block weeks and you will be in, in one, in three months span, you will be doing like six, seven courses, which can become, which can become very uh, overwhelming for people. So that's the disadvantage. Uh, my recommendation uh, would be in terms of like, my recommendations are primarily driven by visa. So we as Indian uh, nationals would be given a tier, tier four visa, wherein our visa is valid for three months after our MBA. So if we were to exit in December, then our visa will expire in March. If people are not able to secure a job, they have to leave in March. So as so what my so what I have learned from the previous batch and my experience so far has been that you would you would choose to have more months at your disposal to look for a good opportunity. Although there will be lot of lot of job opportunities coming your way, but then waiting for the one that, that matches you and, and that much matches your criteria and it's perfect for you might take a little time. So what, what people, the way people design their MD program is that they would only do first week, say for, say for example, they would only do first week of 21 months uh, MBA, which is the study until first week of May, but their visa is valid until November. So they, then they can go around, talk to companies, visit, uh, I mean, probably do another internship during this time. 
and and then they have more time at their disposal to choose which final job they would like to take. In my case, I'm choosing to exit in 18 months. Uh, the reason, the main reason being, I already have a job offer in hand, uh, which is after MBA, and also I, I mean, I want to start earning sooner than later. So I don't want to extend my MBA until July. I would rather exit in April. Uh, practically, uh, it is easier to finish MBA in 18 or 21 months. 15 months, as I told you, is a bit overwhelming. Uh, but 18 months, you can enjoy, you can do full, you can have your own sex, you can, I mean, you can easily manage to finish in 18 months, doing justice to education, doing justice to your network, doing, having, making sure that you travel a lot during your MBA, so every, all your objectives can be met. I would recommend minimum 18 months. Right. Uh, so my next set of question is related to the, uh, the the international exchange program that you talked about. So it has, uh, you, I mean, from I'll just elaborate that uh, uh, in, based on this program, so a student can do a portion of his MBA from any top, any other business school in the world. And you say that most Indian stu students, they pick the you know, top U.S. business schools. So it's uh, like, you know, you are doing it from the top business schools of the world. Uh, maybe your degree is from London Business School, but you are also doing an exchange program with uh, let's say Wharton or Harvard or whatever. So that adds more value to your degree. So now uh, my questions are, uh, number one, what is the duration of this program? Uh, I mean, if you go on an exchange program to Harvard, let's say Wharton, you know, how many months or how many weeks do you have to spend? Second, uh, if you're going to, let's say, Wharton or MIT or any other college to do your exchange program, will you be paying the fees of that university as well? Or is it covered in your London Business School tuition fees? And uh, uh, is there any any other additional cost, basically, if you choose for opt for the uh, exchange program? Uh, my uh, third question is that, La, when does this exchange program happen? Like after the first year of your London Business School program or after six months, when does this happen? And my fourth question is, uh, let's say that somebody is uh, going to the U.S. to do this exchange program. Uh, is he also eligible to look for jobs in the U.S.? I mean, can he, uh, can the student, you know, find a job in the U.S. and then switch it, at the, you know? Uh, so these are my four questions. I hope, um, I hope, uh, you know, I hope I have covered all the questions that our students might have.
And the final question, if you are eligible to look for, for a job, yes, you are eligible to look for a job in the other country. You can, you can go and speak to the career center and also take help from the clubs. You can, I mean, you will be treated like a student there. It is not no different. But one thing you need to take care of is that employers, when they will be coming in the U.S., they will, they will have, I mean, they, they, when coming, say, if you're, if you're doing an exchange with Britain, then all the companies that come to campus would be expecting a Britain graduate and not a London Business School graduate. They, they would also understand the visa requirements accordingly. So it might be slightly practical, it might be slightly difficult. Um, because you are one, you are a London student, your visa has been in, in, in London, you are valid to work currently like for three months after one day, you are valid visa only in London and not in the US. So those are the things that might come, uh, uh, that might work your way. But then yes, if you have a great profile, if the employer is like you, then there is nothing that can stop you from getting a job in the US or in any other country that you wish to. I hope it answers all your questions. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, thank you. So uh, now. Uh, uh, yes, it does. Uh, thank you. So uh, now. Uh, so now I have another set of questions. Uh, so I'm I'm sorry if I'm asking too many questions, but these are some questions that you know are not there on the website, and uh, which you know uh, as students you know we keep getting these you know uh, questions. So um, well, uh, it's now next set of questions is related to the internships, right? So. Uh, when do these internships happen uh, after your first year, six months, or when does uh, six months into the course or nine months into the course? So when do these internships happen? Uh, uh, second, what is the process of applying or you know or getting these internships? Uh, number uh, three, uh, what, uh, is this a paid internship? Uh, and number four. Uh, what is the duration of this internship, right? And um, uh, so these are the four questions. And also in your answer, if you can touch upon how easy or difficult it is to get internships from a different, you know, a different industry. Let's say you are a pre MBA. Let's say you were from the software industry. So can you is how easy or difficult it is to get an internship in, let's say, the finance industry or consulting industry. So if you can touch upon that as well, I think that uh, that would be helpful. So, uh, one good thing about uh, MBA at LBS is that you get to choose when you will be doing internship. You get to take a decision will it be paid or unpaid in the sense uh, there's no one, uh, there's no compulsion that it has to be a paid internship. You can even do a pro bono if, if you really like the sector and you really want to help the business or you completely understand the business problem and it's the experience you're looking for another money. So internships can, can start as early as you get into a, when you get into your MBA program. But typically students don't do it because of because of obvious reasons. They really want to spend some time as a student before they get back to work again. So I've seen people starting their internship from January. So August is when our batch started and the only criteria there are two things that you need to keep in mind. One is that it shouldn't impact your core, it, it shouldn't impact your education because you would have your classes going on. You need to make sure you're not missing your classes or you are meeting your eighty percent attendance criteria, which is much for our visa requirements. Second one second thing that you need to keep in mind is that there's again uh, a gap of five hours. No. I think just ten hours a week, uh Okay, so it's 20 hours a week according to our visa requirements. We cannot work for more than 20 hours a week when we are studying. So these are the only two conditions that we need to keep in mind and we can start interning anytime. Typically, the school uh, gives us a break during this time, which is June to August, after which is in between first and second year when we can do internship uh, completely. We, uh, we, these three months, we will have more classes, and this is the time of for us where we can choose to. We, we, we can do, choose to uh, do internship, we can choose the country, we can choose the industry, we can choose uh, the company, everything uh, is entirely dependent on us. Now, uh, coming to the question, is it paid or not? 
in my case, it is a paid internship, but there are people approximately, I would say, 10 to 15 percent of the class who is doing pro bono internship. Or, uh, and, and the main reason, as I discussed uh, a time back, is that these people are genuinely interested in, in the business, in the business problem, and trying to understand the industry. Uh, now, how easy or difficult it is to get an internship? I would say it is not a difficult process. Um, how internships happen, I mean, how you seek internships here is that from January onwards, the companies start coming to campus. And when I say company, it's usually the big brands, which is in consulting, in banking, and in corporate. Big brands which start coming to campus, you, you, have, you start having your interviews like six months into your MBA, your first interview would, would happen. And if, if you are, if you do not want to intern with, with big brands, then probably you could also reach out to your network. We have a career center team here who helps you, who helps you uh, understand the ways how you can reach out to your network or utilize all the companies that are out there who do not come to campus as well as also utilize the companies that come to campus and give your best shot. We would be, we would be getting trained in parallel on how best to reach out to, uh, to, to the firms, uh, whom to reach out to. So this is something that Career Center is there and will, will help you end to end. Apart from that, you can you, you, are your, you are your own boss in MBA and you can decide which company you want to go to and reach out. I mean, reach out to people on LinkedIn or go and have coffee chats there. Speak to the people, speak to Alan Zerbs, speak to your uh, boss that's senior to so a lot of resources available to us and we can choose, uh, I mean, we can, we can utilize any of them to find internship. But primarily it is a career center and the company that come to campus uh, wherein most of the students get absorbed. Now, uh, I don't know, did I miss any question or did I cover all the time? No, um, I think I think you are good. I think we uh, we covered all the questions. Uh, so uh, thank you so much. Um, just uh, uh, now, just now coming to the segment which I think is uh, bothering a lot of our students. I should say the job opportunities after the MBA. So regarding that, I have a couple of questions. That uh, the uh, in your current batch, uh, how many Indians were there? and uh, have they all been able to find internships? That is the first question. Second question is that in the previous batch, like you know, the batch which is who is graduating this year, again, how many Indians were there and how many of them have been you know, able to uh, find jobs? So I think that is one data point that will, uh, that will interest our, you know, interest our attendees a lot. which is the people who will be graduating this year. Uh, among them, uh, there are, as I mentioned, 90% of the class has already found job. And this is, this is also a factor of when you are graduating. There are some people who, are, who will be continuing until July. And after that, they will, they will start looking for jobs, they are finalizing, by choosing one of the final options that they have uh, on their table. And so, typically, uh, the, uh, according to the data, 90% of, 90 to 95% of the class is able to find, find a job within three months after their MBA. That is not a concern. Yes, Brexit has started to show its impact. Yes, the job market is, uh, is going down, but, but, uh, most of the people around, I would say 90%, definitely 90% of the class has found a job already. This is about the 2017 batch. Talking about 2018 batch, which is my batch, we are in, we are looking for internship. First of all, our class in our class we have 12 percent Indian, which is approximately 60 65 percent of us are Indian. Uh, this this batch consists of people who are who, who are self-employed, people who want to go back to the family businesses and people who, who are not even looking for internship in London. So including those people, I would say 15 to 20 percent of the class is still has still not finalized an internship offer, either they're going back to India to do their family business or their own or own uh, own uh, business or where they are still on the way of finalizing opportunities. So primarily uh, 
the current world has changed in industry, which is like, uh, which is a uh, man moving from consulting to corporate or from corporate to consulting or banking. So people who are changing in uh, industries usually uh, usually juggle to uh, pick up which which sector they want to get into and which company they want to enter, and they usually take a longer time than than people who are more sorted and are aware which company and which industry they want to enter with. So, uh, so if I am to uh, summarize, so what you were saying that that uh, for people who are uh, who are clear about which industry go to go to, and if they uh, get their get their internship accordingly, so uh, they have better uh, chances of landing a job than people who uh, who do, who have not decided about which industry to go to. And so at the I mean, while well, at least at the time of graduation, everybody should be clear about what industry to go into. Right? Am I am I uh, correct about that assumption? Absolutely, but I would just like to correct it here. It's not that they find it, uh, people who want to change industries find it difficult to uh, find a job. Honestly, we are, we are people with five years or seven years of experience, and we are people who have, who, who have an MBA from one of the top business schools in the world. So there are a lot of companies out there who want us as interns. Nothing better than having us as interns, wherein they pay a fraction of your of annual uh, salary. Us and, and we can pick up our brains and uh, I mean there are a lot of opportunities out there in the market but just that people become picky um, because you, you, are the, you are the one who wants to change the industry you are looking for something perfect that's that's why you take time and it's not that you do not have options at hand so there are there are people in my batch who have who have already signed up for two or three internships already and there are people in my batch who have four or five options and are still taking time to decide which one to choose. Simply because they are changing industries and they are still trying to find which one overlaps with their, with their uh, uh, long term career goals. Right. So uh, now we'd uh, like to come to. I would uh, like to come to specifically, you know, uh, to your profile. So uh, just can you um, and your profile, your journey, journey, your experience till now, obviously. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, your profile before the MBA? You no, know, that uh, like you know, what industry were you from? What were your academics like, etc. Uh, GMAT score, whatever it is, you know. So can you the, your profile? Uh, uh, second is that you know while applying you know uh, uh, where uh, did you struggle you know uh, third you mentioned that you have already found a job so just tell us whether you were switching industries or you were just looking for jobs in the same industry right so that and uh, fourth question is that in your opinion um, uh, is uh, I mean London Visa School is expensive of course so in your opinion uh, what kind of uh, uh, you know return on investment do you think uh, the uh, London uh, LBS MB offers okay. uh, so I I have seven years of work experience before I came to Vandu. For four and a half years I was with McKinsey and for two and a half years I was with a startup company in India. Uh, my experience has only been in risk management. Uh, I have helped banks across the world in managing credit risk and stress testing. So my GMAT score was 700. The place where I really struggled with uh, during my application was actually appearing for the GMAT exam. As you know, McKinsey is, is a busy place and you are traveling most of the time. So I found it really hard to take some time off to appear to prepare and appear for GMAT exam, especially given I had already spent six years in the industry and um, I had actually lost touch with studies. It took me it took me a while. It took me a couple of months to prepare for GMAT and give my exam, and that is where even I that is why I needed some very help also. So once I was done with GMAT, it was it was a very easy easy uh, entry into a B school. Uh, I had recommendations from the top uh, parents, from the top people out there in the industry. I was I knew that I'm doing MBA, so writing an application wasn't difficult. I took I also took help from Gandhi and I 
any application in the sense just to polish the language and have a final look like that I was traveling on the planet. Um, so the process, overall, once once I wrote the GMAT, it wasn't difficult for me to get into a B school uh, and choose one of the universities of LB. Uh, apart from that, talking about uh, talking about the ROI uh, on, in London Business School, so I would say it is, it is definitely beneficial to do MBA because primarily at the third MBA, the practice that I was earning in INR is nowhere comparable to what I'm doing as well right now. So from I1, I understand the currency transfer from INR to pound, but the package that I am being offered now is actually uh, over 100,000 pounds annual. On an average, the salary after one day is 75 to 80,000 pounds um, would be your annual package, which is just your, your basic. On that, you would also have a bonus of at least 10,000 pounds. So, all the companies that come to campus understand the quality, your quality of the profile and the kind of person you are, or all the, all the value of the business school, and definitely it, it helps you out. I spoke to a couple of people, alums of London Business School, and people who have taken education loan, and of my experience, more people have been able to pay off a post-graduation fee in less than in less than five years. So somewhere between three to five years you can easily repay all your debt. Uh, and this is when I'm I say five years then assuming that you're leading a very good lifestyle. But I just say and I already have two job opportunities in hand, uh, which is one from Amazon, London office, and the second one is McKinsey, London office. So uh, congratulations on your job offers and I've got two of them so that's excellent you know of course and your salary package sounds uh, pretty alluring you know. Um, so uh, just uh, some basic questions regarding the admissions process what are the some of, some of our attendees would like to know you know what uh, uh, what are the admissions criteria uh, of course the, they would it's like it will be standard stuff like GMAT, uh, work experience, etc. But I would we'd like to share, have some insider information about um, what does London Business School prefer? What kind of GMAT scores do they expect from Indian students? Uh, what kind of work experience do they expect from Indian students? Uh, do they give slight, this is a rumor that we hear, we keep on hearing that, you know, they give slight preference to female candidates, you know, so, so give us some insider information, you know, specific to Indian students, you know, uh, so that would definitely uh, that would definitely add value to whatever you know is already there on the website, of course. So, so one thing is that what London Business School prefers is how diverse and how different your experience is from the rest of the class. So anyone, I see people coming uh, to school from different types of backgrounds, people who have been in military, people who have been journalists, people who have been um, who, who work for say uh, corporate consulting banking. So people from all backgrounds come, including Indians. It is no different for Indians as well. Uh, the only criteria is how how are you able to distinguish yourself from the rest of your class? What is the value that you bring to the table? This is one of the main criteria. So even when I was being interviewed for London Business School, my interview was simply interested to know how different my experience was. Is it like is it like 
something very, very common or is it something unique that I'm going to the table? Uh, being able to highlight that uniqueness is, is the key. Even if you are doing, even if you're doing a consulting job like I was doing, uh, which is, which is, which is most of like 35% of my classes doing consulting, but I could easily highlight how different my experience is from the rest of the consultants in, in MBA. So make sure you're able to highlight your evaluation. Uh, secondly, uh, what was the next question I forgot? I don't know what was your next question, sorry. Oh yeah, uh, so uh, my uh, uh, next question was that you know that um, there is a this uh, you know myth that you know that female candidates you know they uh, you know it's easier for them slightly you know to get into business schools because um, you know to keep keep up the you know gender ratio kind of thing. So for the same profile, if a male candidate would need a seven fifty for his GMAT, let's say a female would probably need a you know seven twenty seven thirty. So uh, what is your take on that? So honestly, uh, I would say that the data doesn't suggest something like that. That uh, females are given more preference and they, they would accept females with less GMAT also. My class, the, in, in my class, I have I have classmates who have female classmates who have as high as GMAT score as 750 and as low as 700. Probably I would be the one in the last round. And this holds true for males as well. There are, there, are, there are male students also in the range of 700 to 750 GMAT. So I wouldn't say uh, that you, you, for females the conditions are lacked, uh, the criteria are, la are lacked. But at the same time, yes, females are given more, uh, more preference. Uh, the Southern Business School is aiming to have at least 35% of the of female uh, females in the class. So definitely. Uh, you, you have a chance, uh, I mean, you will be considered more if you're a female student coming from an economy like India uh, than, than a male student coming from India. Having said that, moreover, this does not mean that that competition is less for us. Although there are there is a preference given to us, but there are a lot of people out there who are looking to get into London Business School. So do not underestimate your competition. And you also have to uh, have a hard battle to fight. Talking about the class, uh, uh, previously I don't know what is the GMAT and the uh, experience. So there are people who have uh, so the range of experiences here is somewhere between two to nine years. There are people who just have two years of experience in our class, and there are people there are two people who have uh, nine years of experience. Average class experience is 5 years, and the GMAT score average is 720, and there are people between 700 to 750. I haven't, I haven't seen anyone below 700 GMAT score. Right. So what you're saying is that you know that if uh, somebody to stand a realistic chance, uh, uh, yes, definitely it helps. Hi. It helps. So, um, so as I was saying, so to uh, if uh, is it right to assume that you know that somebody to stand a realistic chance of getting admission from uh, from India to uh, uh, London Business School, should the target around uh, seven hundred? They should target around seven hundred to uh, seven twenty uh, GMAT score uh, at least, right? And uh, have two to three years of uh, work experience, um, you know. So and uh, etc. Okay, so uh, you know we have a question from Lisha. She is asking that is it possible to get into the LBS MBA uh, as a fresher? That means without any work experience. Uh, as a fresher, that means without any work experience. No, it's not possible. In fact, uh, this is a study across public schools across the world. Uh, they need some kind of work experience so that you can value that in the class with your experiences. And 
Okay, so uh, so I think uh, I think Lisha that uh, that answers your uh, question. So thank you, Vinny. So I just I will now just uh, take a few questions related to scholarships. There are some people asking questions about you know uh, scholarship options. So how many st what uh, do Indian students get scholarships? Is if yes, then what uh, percentage of tuition fee waiver? What do they get get and uh, what are the you know um, what are the criteria for scholarship? Indian students get the scholarship, I would say 10 to 15 percent of our Indian batchmates have, have got scholarship, including me. Uh, the progression of the scholarship can be uh, as, low, uh, as low as, say, uh, 30 percent to 100 percent tuition fee being waived out. Uh, the scholarship can be obtained from the school and there are multiple universities, um, not universities, multiple businesses and multiple charity organizations from where you can get, you can get scholarship. Uh, the criteria is that you, one, in some of the scholarships like London Business School Scholarship and uh, a couple of more, you are automatically considered based on your application. They will reach out to you if, if you are one of those top 5 to 10% of the class who is very different and bring very different experience to the table, then the school itself would reach out to you automatically, you don't have to do anything. Well, that's an automatic process that goes on badly. But for organizations like a, like Nestle or any other organization that is giving you internship, uh, sorry, scholarship, they would, they would they have like essay or something which they would put, or which they would uh, and to you, you have to write a, answer a couple of questions and based on your responses, you become eligible for scholarship. So I have seen over 20 to 25 organizations uh, that that are giving scholarships to and business school students. Uh, the details of all these organizations can be found online on the website and you can, you can reach out to the school, take help from the admissions uh, team to understand what is the process for, for those uh, for each of those organizations. The majority of them would consider you automatically for the for scholarship. Uh, um, what's the uh, approximate uh, cost of the uh, cost of the MBA? What's the approximate uh, uh, cost of the LBS MBA? Approximately LBS MBA. So tuition fee itself, as far as I remember, this year tuition fee is seventy five thousand pounds. And living expenses would be somewhere between thirty to forty thousand pounds, depending on number of trips, number of trips you've made, and the kind of and the place you're living in. So my, the biggest expenditure as a student that I have incurred is in in rent and in in traveling. So you can these two, depending on these two things, uh, you can fund yourself in in say hundred thousand pounds to hundred and ten thousand pounds. Right. Uh, so uh, now you know there is some uh, questions, uh, some specific questions. You know, uh, some people wanting to uh, uh, shift to let's say marketing. Some people want to shift to something. So if somebody wants to shift industry, let's say uh, somebody wanting to go from IT to uh, you know consulting or marketing to uh, consulting or from consulting to operations. So for if some people looking for switch, people looking for switching industry. You know, uh, so what kind of uh, is there any specific uh, specific uh, program or are there any specific clubs etc which will help students you know ease into the new industry does london business school and um, the alumni network you know uh, help in finding you know relevant uh, uh, internships for instance if I, i'm from operations background if i want to move into uh, investment banking let's say you know so uh, what are the steps you know uh, so for people who are looking for switching industries what are the resources available No, that's all. No, that's all. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed answering your questions. Uh, no, uh, I think... Uh, I have no questions. Uh, uh, I, th I think uh, I think you did not get my last question. My last question was that people who are looking to you know switch industries, uh, so what are the resources available? If somebody wants to switch from marketing to finance or finance to operations, people looking to switch industries, 
what are the steps? What should they do once the MBA starts and what resources does London Business School have? So for people who are looking to change industries, uh, the resources again remain the same for the people who are planning to continue. London Business School does not uh, segregate you with uh, the countries, in case countries to personally or reach to those companies. Uh, the practical uh, problems, uh, so practical uh, challenge that you would face is uh, how would you sell yourself to a company or an industry where you do not have any experience? And that, that's where internships come handy. Um, people who are looking to change industries, I would strongly recommend them to, to do internship in the industry where you they want to get into full time. One, it allows you to understand if you are a good fit for that industry and, and, and also it, has, like, it will help you understand if you would want to work well. And second, it gives you an, it gives an opportunity to the employer to, to ensure that you already have your experience in that industry because otherwise no employer would want to want to hire an expensive resource like us uh, with, without any relevant experience. So even they would appreciate if you have some relevant experience even if it is in the kind of internship. So uh, yeah, so I mean just to summarize it is the resources are the same. Uh, you have career center at your help, uh, you have the, the companies who come to campus irrespective of whether you're interested or not. Uh, you can choose where you want to apply and and I recommend doing internship in the industry you want to get into post MBA. So uh, now now I'll start taking questions uh, from the chat window. So Siddharth has this question that uh, do employers consider age factor while recruiting? So if uh, somebody is 40 years old versus somebody who is 34 years old or 32 years old after the MBA. So uh, do employers take into consideration the age factor while recruiting? I would say it is not the age, that is the main criteria, it's actually your experience. And, uh, and as you know, there is a high correlation with, with, between age and experience. Uh, so it is the quality of your experience that employers consider uh, while, uh, while recruiting you. There are some of my classmates who would be going uh, to consulting from straight as engagement managers, senior engagement managers, and there are some of my classmates who would be going to same consulting firms as the associates. So it is your experience that matters, uh, the kind of work you've done before and what level did you come from that would be taken into consideration. But yes, if you are if you are young, if you're twenty five or if you're twenty four, um, that again doesn't matter. You you will be the ones who will who will, who will be recruited as associates in the result of the firms. Uh, so then I'll just a couple of... Uh, MBA at least guarantees you a minimum entry level. It wouldn't be, it is not similar to undergraduation. There is a minimum entry level that all firms would uh, would give to you as MBA. So you can be rest assured on that one that you do not have to negotiate your way. Uh, and you would always be on one of the fast track programs in any of the big companies. So thank you for that uh, uh, answer. So... Um, uh, they, uh, Rishi Raj wants to know that uh, are there any family business oriented majors? You know, so uh, majors that will help people wanting to get back into the family business. That is number one. Second, Darshan has a question saying that um, it is about you. You know, um, what electives did you uh, take? You know, uh, or uh, would you take? You know, if you want to go for consultancy or private equity. Uh, yes, there are majors in family business. Uh family businesses as well. I have seen over over five to six electives that are only particularly uh, for people who are in the family business, how to grow the business, how to set up businesses, how to get funding, uh, how best to manage the marketing. So there are a lot of uh, electives on your dispos at your disposal. You can check the list from the website. And from my experience with the classmates uh, who are in family businesses, I have seen that they always talk good stuff about LBS and, and the resources that they have. The, the, the professors, the, uh, the electives, everything is so good. I've seen people uh, from 
family businesses, really growing their business, business in less than a year after joining the school. We totally recommend it for people who are in family businesses. Coming to Darshan's question, which is uh, electives to be chosen for private equity and consulting. For private equity, there are there are a couple of electives uh, uh, that LBS is known for in, in the B-School world uh, for private equity, which is private equity and venture capital elective. This is one of the best electives being offered here. And you could do that one. Uh, for consulting, there is not that there, there, there aren't any particular electives, but yes, there are electives across finance that, I mean, I would, I plan to go back to risk management. I plan to take up finance electives as well as risk management electives. Um, but there are also electives across uh, uh, on soft skills, which are, which, in, which are consulting needs in a way, which is interpersonal skills, how to manage change, how to negotiate. Um, so there are soft skills electives as well as the hard skills electives also. You can choose which particular uh, uh, sector you want to get into and accordingly pick up an elective even within consulting. Uh, thank you, Vinny, for that. I hope that answers your uh, question. So uh, there are a couple of more questions. Darshan has two of them. Uh, how many maximum, you know, how many electives can a student take? Second, is it possible to do a double major? Uh, those are Darshan's question. questions. Uh, Niladri has a question that are there in are there any doctors on the current in your current class, I guess. And um, if yes, then what kind of majors or electives do uh, they uh, prefer? So these are the uh, uh, these are the two questions. So uh, answering Darshan's question, uh, there are there are two So there is a question from Shagun. She's uh, he she's asking that you know are there any uh, people from the oil and natural gas uh, sector in you know in your in your batch? Lots of them. I would say five to seven percent of our batch are So, uh, so I think uh, Abhishek, your question is: uh, uh, Are there uh, what are the chances of students in engineering sector? So, Abhishek, you know, majority of any business class, not not just London Business School, majority of any business class actually engineering sector. So you don't have to worry. I mean, uh, about you know <laughs> about whether they take engineering students background or not. If they stop taking engineers, then hardly anybody left. You know. Um, uh, then um, uh, so Priya has a question: Are are there any Indians with fashion, uh, lifestyle, retail background in the current batch? You know, so, uh, so just and I think Vinny, you can see Darshan's question also in the, uh, you know, uh, in the so so you can reply that as well. Sumant, I will again address your question: How many are from economic background? Trust me, a lot. 
so these are very common backgrounds so you don't have to worry about all of this so um vini could you uh, answer the questions about the fashion background students in your class and darshan's uh, uh, darshan's question so i think those two we would need your inputs that's it so we'll take a uh, you know uh, like two more questions so last two questions uh, devashi she is asking you know uh, the conversion rate of admissions of a candidate with a unique background preferable so uh, uh, it's it's a pretty, i mean it's obviously it's, it's far higher you know the more diverse or unique your profile is the higher your chances so that's a, but i would still you know uh, you know if if you have anything to add to that vini you are welcome obviously then um uh, there is also uh, like you know um some of them have a question regarding the mim program versus the mba program you know who should be doing whom so uh, we always advise students that if your work experience is not significant better go for the mim than the mba because you may not get admission in the mba program but uh, again if you have anything else to add you know please feel free so these are the last two questions we are doing today so
yeah i would um, i uh, you know i, I would actually um, uh, agree with vinny on this you know london uh, business school is known for its mba program and it is expensive so if you have to invest so much time and you know money and energy you know into uh, like in, in in the degree better uh, do some you know, get some work experience work in your profile and apply for the uh, you know mba in terms of uh, if you look at again this information is all available on the lbs website if you look at the uh, employment data or anything you know and mim graduate uh, does not get uh, you know it gets probably about 60 70 percent of the starting salaries as an mba does so that is also a huge factor right but the tuition fee difference is not that huge so keep, taking all of those uh, things into considerations you know consideration you might want to invest a few years in building your work profile and then do the mba instead of you know um, uh, hurrying into an mim program so um i think that's all for today thank you vinny so much i know it's 8 a.m uh, in uh, london so thank you for waking up so early on a saturday for us uh, thank you for this. I mean, we have known you since you were a student. So you have been a great student. We had work with you on your application. So it was a great experience. So uh, thank you for doing this and do stay in touch. All the best with your internship. I think it starts on Monday, right? So, um, you know, uh, best of luck for your internship. And uh, so uh, thank you, uh, you know, thank you. Actually, thanks to everybody for showing up, you know, for this session on a Saturday. Uh, I have given you the links um, uh, of our, the, our webinar schedule on our website. So we have a series of webinars going on, a lot of information. And before deciding which college to apply to or, uh, you know, uh, which uh, program to go for, you can, you should arm yourself with as, as much information as possible for Jamboree students. Actually, for everybody, this, uh, these webinars are for free. So all you have to do is register. So that's it. And um, I've, we have also given the email ID. So in case you have further questions, you know, if you have further questions for Vinny or some specific questions about London Business School, please write to us at that email ID, you know, uh, so we'll, we'll have them answered. So thank you all. Uh, have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks, Vinny. Thanks a lot. Happy to take more questions in case people have. And good luck for you as well. And good luck, everyone. Hope you're able to put together a good application and apply to an IC in, in this period. Thank you so much. So Devashis, it's 9 a.m. now, but when we started at 12.30, it was 8 a.m. So, <laughs> so it is 9 a.m. now, you know. So, uh, uh, <laughs> so right. All right. And I um, I do apologize for the uh, voice audio quality. So audio quality has not been as great as our earlier webinar. So I think the, there was some issue. But uh, in spite of that, I hope you guys found some useful information. Uh, uh, again, we'll, uh, next time we'll try to... Uh, try to uh, cut down on the audio differences. So we'll, we'll try to improve the tech, I should say, you know. So, all right, thank you, everybody. I hope I'll see you guys back uh, of on, um, I think, on 24th June. 24th June is when we have, uh, when we have our next uh, rendezvous with B-School uh, webinar. And uh, we, on the, the today, five, uh, on 17th at uh, 5 p.m., we have the Jambori GMAT assistance series going on. So in case you know about you will see all of that in the webinar schedule anyway. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Vinny. Just feel free to log out. Thank you all.